Hello everybody, we've got another moneymaker on the table today. Actually, two. We're gonna test out herb runs in 2024. Can they make you money with a mid-level account? Since a lot of you probably already know you can't actively do herb runs, we've got some downtime to kill. So in between, we're gonna smith some cannonballs, a tried and true moneymaker for years. But of course, we can't just do things normally on one account. We gotta pump up the efficiency by four. We've got one main account and three alts ready to perform this task. And without further ado, let's get into it. So there's always only one goal here, and that's to make some money. This time, we are gotta do it in two separate ways, smithing and mining. But we got a couple of chores to take care of before we can get to it, like Elemental Workshop for some easy smithing experience, or a relatively new quest on the block, a ribbiting tail, and it gives us a decent amount of farming experience. Another juicy smithing XP drop from the Sleeping Giants quest. This one wasn't technically necessary, but Tears of Guthix out of the way. This account has just been sitting here, poisoned, waiting for the other two to finally get done with the quest. I'm pretty sure when I get off of this quest screen, it's gonna just beat me to death with poison. <laughs> Alright, here goes. Just one, that's nice. Would that be considered an animation stall? A little bit of farming experience in the weirdest place you can find it. RFD Goblin Quests, done. Quickly completing Lost Cities so we can complete Fairy Tale Part 1. And this is the most important quest too because we need those magic secutors. Bone Voyage done on one account so far. Unfortunately, I was definitely not able to do it on three accounts at once. Screwed the pooch on that one immediately. But we're getting there eventually. Just a little bit more smithing experience with the giant dwarf and one of the last quests on the list. Aside from the forgettable tale, Garden of Tranquility, and Enlightened Journey for some very easy farming experience. So before we move on, we have one major hurdle in our way. We need auto weed if I'm going to do any amount of farm runs, because I'm not taking a rake with me. That means 145 of these beautiful fruits on each account. And let's just take a second to appreciate the nice updates they've given to Tithe Farm. The fact that we don't have to rush to gather the fruit immediately makes it so you can do some pretty cool stuff like this, gathering the entire field at once, just like a task was for her leagues. Almost nostalgic. But after an afternoon of farming, we've got auto weed number one, number two, and number... What? 40... 49 out of 50. Damn it. Okay, now, auto weed number three. <laughs> but funny enough, while we're testing out this moneymaker here, we even got 50 smithing. And it's a good way to say that's where we're starting today. And coincidentally, we're starting out at 50 farming as well as 60 farming on the main. So I guess it's finally time to see, can the med levels of farming actually make some money? And this is totally my opportunity to say, while well, I get 55 and 65 smithing, Go get the smithing outfit to get even more experience than I did. But while we're pulling in 60 smithing, I will say the cannonball mold will only make this quicker. It doesn't give you more cannonballs. If it did, this would be absolutely necessary. So let's talk about money for a minute. We've spent almost 17 mil buying up all of these Renar seeds. 125 on each account. And on each one of these accounts, we're going to buy ourselves 10 thousand steel bars to smith into cannonballs costing us essentially five mil each 20 more mil down the drain so we got our numbers we got our goals and it's time to get to work every farm run chance we get we're going to be taking it and in the meantime we're going to be smelting up as many cannonballs as possible in the future we could try to revisit something like this to see what it would be like fully decked out with the farming outfit and smithing outfit but technically, it doesn't affect our money, so I'm not sure if it's worth it. Little frustrations that people might not think about when you have a bunch of accounts to play is banking takes so long, even just making sure that everybody has the exact same inventory. But with our first farm run coming to a close, we were able to pull in 1.3 mil. That is such a good sign, and I can't wait to see how much money we're going to make. When it comes to farming, it's a little bit harder to get all the level screens at the same time. But that's 55 farming, 
and we're only about 25 seeds in. A truly important level of 69 smithing on the main. And yet again another smithing milestone of 65 all the way around, but 70 for the main. For you guys, you probably already get it. It's hard to make smithing cannonballs or a farm run interesting. You absolutely gotta find yourself a good show on Netflix, or maybe you could get the music pumping. But for me, it's so motivating that we are already halfway through this. And I'm so excited to see how much we're going to make. I just want to sell them right now, but I'll wait. I'll wait. But on the farm run side, we're pulling in 56 farming, and we're already over half done with those two. It's really hard to prove this, but I actually ran out of cannonballs at the exact same time that I ran out of our Renar seeds. But to give you guys a quick idea of what it looks like to actually gear up for a farm run on four different accounts, this is an elapsed time of over a minute. Just sitting here messing around. I've even got the farm tabs. I have it in front of my face to know what I'm looking for. And it still takes forever. But once we're all finally in Falador, I follow my main account and we start running to the herb patch. It would be a lot more convenient if we all had the Lumbridge Achievement Diary done. I'm pretty sure this would cut off at least a minute or two. But that does leave us a decent opportunity to figure out how much more experience could be made, how much more money, and how much less time can we do it in. After that, we're hauling our ass out to the Ardone patch. Yes, my main account does have the cape to just be able to teleport straight to it, but it throws off the flow when you got four accounts trying to do the same thing at once. So it's just much easier to have him do the long way around. But that does also point out the fact that not all of these accounts have full graceful and they end up losing run right at the end. So one more thing that we can improve on in the future. After that we're going to be hauling ourselves to Camelot and all the way to Cather B. I could end up using a Cather B teleport but I don't really want to change my spell book and it might be a waste of money to have a spell tab for it. But at the same time if you guys are seeing any glaring efficiency routes Put it down in the comments below, because I gotta hear about it. But after a short trip to Catherby, we're heading our way to Mortania. And uh, do I have the worst luck with this farming patch? <laughs> Two are even dead this time. And I fail to regret that I didn't keep track of how many died in the process of this video. That's going to be one thing that I have to keep track of next time. But what's your unluckiest patch, everybody? When are you doing your farm run and you just know that bitch is gonna fail? I will also say that we are using the best ultra compost that we can find, but we will not be protecting the crops because it might just be a waste of money. Who knows? Uh, another difference we can try next time. With a quick teleport to the outside of our house, we're able to get the Karend patch very easy. I used to use the Tithe Farm minigame teleport, but that just took way too long. We could also use the Kahardas Memories, if that's how you pronounce it, but that's complicated to refill its charges. Now, I know there's got to be a better way to do this, and I have not explored Varlamore very much. If you guys know an easier way to get to the Varlamore Herb Patch, please leave it down below. And now we reach the greatest funnel neck. We have to start walking. We don't have full graceful on all of these accounts, and that's a problem. Not only could their agility levels be a little bit higher too, I don't want to use a stamina potion because that would greatly take away from our total at the end. And I'm embarrassed to say, but that took about 12 minutes to complete a single farm run, and I'm even missing a couple of the harder farming patches to get to. So I see so many opportunities to shave some time. But to come back to the smithing for just a moment, we are officially a third of the way there. 30,000 cannonballs on each account, and the end is in sight. An important level for my main, and I even pushed a little bit harder on some hardwood trees to get there. We've unlocked the second tier of the farming guild and one more herb patch. So a funny thing happened right at the end to throw off my herb seed numbers, one of my mains was diseased, so instead of it just being gone to waste, it was in the next round of farm runs. So I can't do 499 seeds 
So this is why we're planting one right at the farming guild. And boy, oh boy, this one better fucking grow. <laughs> so I was serious when I said this, everybody. Timing could not have been better. We're like 20 minutes away from our last farm run. And these are the last nine cannonballs on each account to make 40,000 cannonballs, 10,000 steel bars smithed. Man, I am so excited to see the total. All right, everybody, let's talk some numbers while we sell some stuff in the background. So all together, we had 40,000 steel bars that we crafted into 160,000 cannonballs, selling them all for 36 mil. It did cost us 20 mil, so we really only made about 16 in that transaction. But 16 mil is nothing to scoff at. And if anyone was curious, the bars were all bought at 500 gold apiece. Which brings us to the Renar Seeds, which we spent 33,650 on each one of these seeds, because our buy price was placed at 35,000 clean. We bought ourselves 500 Renar Seeds, and we were able to pull out 3,969 herbs out of the ground for a total sale of 26,743,815 gold. But it did cost us about 17 mil to get all of that. So technically we're only pulling away with 9.7 mil profit from just the herbs. But I'm sure what everybody's been waiting for, all together we were able to make, after expenses, 25.7 mil. And that's just dailies and AFK. And like I said several times in this video, the potential for money and experience can be through the roof if you went to go get a couple of extra things on the list. And for anyone wondering how much experience we were able to pull in just farming herbs, it was 150k farming experience across all four accounts. And for anyone wondering about the cannonball experience, you'd be able to get just over 1 mil experience across all four accounts, doing 40,000 steel bars. But without further ado, everybody, like if you liked it, leave some ideas in the comments below, and I'll see you all later.